Good. Well, that was rather a, a, a humbling kind of um, session to follow there, really. I was um, almost had some tears in my eyes for that. It was quite, quite amazing, and it sort of took me back a little bit. Uh, over the years that I've been um, teaching uh, Tai Chi and, uh, and Qigong about the, the number of um, episodes of people coming to me and telling me about how it's improved their health in many, many different ways, some quite serious and quite simple ways as well. So it just goes you, the more you practice, the more you do of this kind of stuff, the more healthy you can become. And I'm also a prime example of that, having been told about six years ago that I needed a new hip, um, a replacement hip, and then refused to have it, and then worked on um, um, using my mind and moving chi down there to, to improve it, and then acupuncture, and then followed just recently by somebody called um, uh, a bone setter who is locally to me, Chinese gentleman. Yeah. Uh, and that really, really did, did make quite a difference. So, um, without further ado, um, uh, there's, there's a little bit of information about me from Tari at the beginning. I did start off um, when I was much younger with um, Shotokan Karate, and then I, I moved to Tai Chi, and then um, I found uh, the BHQ way uh, a few years ago and, um, and became an instructor and, uh, and really, really thoroughly enjoy uh, participating in, in the focusing. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about Chen style Tai Chi. Um, it's um, half an hour is really not very not very long to do anything. So very, very quickly, you hear lots of different stories and there are probably all of them are true. But the way we look at it, there's a, is a gentleman called Chen Wang Ting lived between 1600 to 1680. He actually, although there were martial arts going on in China before then, he actually created them, put together in a more structured way um, tai Chi and uh, invented it, well, it brought in the unity of yin and yang, um, breath control techniques, and also the, the Chinese meridian um, uh, system uh, from the medical point of view. And more recently, um, a very, very famous um, Chinese uh, grandmaster was Chen Farke. He lived from 1887 until 1957, and he's kind of called the modern time expert. And he was absolutely perfect in everything that he did. Um, his hardness and his softness was absolutely perfectly balanced, his yin and yang. And he was really quite an important person in the, in the development of Chen style Tai Chi and the, and the spreading of the, the, um, the style around China and around the world as well. Today, we are still very, very fortunate to have two very famous grandmasters, um, Chen Zhengli, um, who lives, still lives in the Chen village in China, Chen Zhagao, and Chen Zhao Wang, um, also he lives in Australia now, and both of them teaching all around the world. Um, my teacher is, as, um, as Master Tari mentioned, his grandmaster Wang Haizhong, um, a very, very wonderful, very humble, very kind, very gentle person, but absolutely awesome in his skills and his techniques. So really, really good, really, really good. So, um, basic training principles on, on um, Chen style Tai Chi. Uh, there are many, many, many principles, and we can't go through all of them today. Foundation is really, really important. Okay, it's important in most Tai Chi's, but foundation really is important. Remembering that the kidneys hold the fundamental um, yin yang, yeah, the prenatal source and um, vital for Qi. Okay, and we need to always have a relaxed body in, in, um, in Chen style and in all Tai Chi. And we often talk about the 70% rule, yeah, which is maybe if an arm is completely locked, yeah, 100%, you can't make it any straighter, yeah, we always have 70% rule, yeah, because the Qi will flow much better through a soft joint than it does through a locked joint. Okay, so very, 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 very important. Um, so a relaxed body is really important. And when you have a relaxed body, then the chi will settle down into the dantian. Yeah. We talk about sometimes emptying the chest and filling the abdomen. Okay. Moving the chi down. Okay. Um, stimulates the, um, the, the yang quan in the feet as the chi goes down through the legs and provides rooting. And what rooting creates is a rooted lower body, which is very, very strong, for you say, from the waist downwards. We can see our legs have become like an oak tree, a very flexible middle section, which you can use as, a, as an axis for turning and rotating. 
and a very livened and flowing upper body where the body and the arms move in a, in a nice relaxed way. Okay, so this is really, um, although we, we, we look at Tai Chi, and we see our external movements, and this is what we practice and we do and we teach. In actual fact, all of Tai Chi, like Qigong, is an internal system. Yeah, and we really need to think more about internal and what is happening inside us when we're doing, when we're doing our practice. And one of the, there are many, many stories in, in, um, in, um, in Tai Chi, many, many things. But the, the one thing that I mentioned, if you nourish the roots of the tree, yeah, then the branches and leaves will flourish. Okay, so the same with the body, yeah. Nourish your roots, bring the chi down, yeah, and the branches and the leaves and everything else will flourish. Okay, good. So now going on to um, what I'm gonna show you a little bit, very, very little time today. The Lao Zha, yeah. Lao Zha is the old frame. It was the first really structured Tai Chi uh, system to, developed in China with uh, Chen Wang Ting when he first started looking at all this kind of stuff in a more structured way. And uh, there are basically two routines. The routine one, which is mainly softness with some hardness in, in, embedded into it. And routine two, which is mainly a lot of it is hardness uh, with embedded softness. Okay, so the style I, I'm learning and teaching is the routine one. It's about 74 movements, takes a very, very long time to learn. And, um, but it's a very important um, uh, Tai Chi form that if you were doing this practice in China, um, in the park or somewhere, people would recognize what it is immediately, uh, same as they would with Young 24 form and these other famous forms. Okay, so first of all, uh, what we're going to try and do a little bit of is some uh, what we call silk reeling. Okay, so silk reeling was developed by, I think, by Chen Zheng Li. And what he tried to do was to, to take out certain elements of the form and just make them into this quite simple and easy, easy practice and just practicing and getting the feeling of the, of the movement. Okay, so you need to feel the movement, you need to be relaxed and feel the movement and feel, then eventually you feel the flow. Okay, uh, the other thing with uh, when we're practicing is our palm. There's often people talk about, well, how, how, what is the hand shape in, 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 uh, in different, different things? Well, in Chen style Tai Chi, we have something called the Chen palm, sometimes called the concave shingle palm. Okay, and the Chen palm is basically the three middle fingers yeah, are fairly straight and the little finger and the thumb just turned in very slightly so they're opposite each other. And when you do this, this creates a little hollow in the center of your palm here, which runs through the your Lao Gong point in the center of your palm, okay? So this allows the chi to flow through the arm and through the hand. And if you're in a martial application, then, then you can strike and you can use this, this situation, okay? So that's it for talking. Let's put a little bit of music on from here. Okay, so let's do some um, some silk reading, yeah, to start off with. Just a little tiny bit of silk reading, okay? So feet together, first of all, standing nice and straight, arms relaxed. And we'll sink and step to the left, okay? And then a little bit more to the left, okay? Just adjust your stance a little bit wider. Soften the knees slightly, feel as if you are sitting on a stool, okay? So from, from the sideways, if you sit down, yeah, push this back and the tailbone down very slightly. So you nearly have a nice flat pelvic area, okay? So sitting on a stool, so this is back. You're nice and relaxed. And I'm not going to marry you, so you're going to be on the opposite side to me, but place your left hand on your left hip. So fingers pointing forward, thumb pointing backwards, and right hand, palm facing forward. Slight chin, chin palm, and elbow, shoulder, nice and relaxed. Very nice and relaxed. And we do what's been called the first movement, which is single-handed front silk reeling. So move the upper palm a little bit to the side and then down as you come across, turning the palm to face it upwards, yeah. lifting up to about shoulder height, turn the palm to face forward and pulling across, pulling across. OK, 
Okay, so weight and weight shifting to the left, turning to the left. Is the palm rising up? Shift the weight to the right, turn the hand over, pulling across. Okay, low level breathing in, high level breathing out. Again, just nice and relaxed feeling. I turn to the side. And coming across, you see the space between my hand and my body. Yeah. Shifting, putting across. Shift the weight. Shift the weight, turning with the waist, shift the weight, turning with the waist. One more. Good. Change hands, right hand and right hip, left hand start position. Okay, and move the weight a little bit to the left, hand turning. Moving across, nice and relaxed as the hand rises, shift the weight to the left, pulling across. Hands coming down, shift the weight to the right, turning with the waist. Shift the weight to the left, pulling across, palm facing away. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. And breathing out. One more. Breathing in. And breathing out. Stepping in, breathing in, and breathing out. And a little shake, just uh, swing the arms, just keep the legs a little bit. Okay, so uh, Lao Jar is, um, the, although we have two main proponents of Lao Jar in this, the, the, the age we're living in now, Chen Zheng Li, Chen Xiao Wang, if you um, Google um, to look at Chen style Tai Chi, you may see lots of different variations on it. Yeah? Even for the Lao Jia routine one, lots of different variations. And even Chen Zheng Li and Chen Xiao Wang have their own take on it. So they're, they're slightly different. So if you, if you are with a teacher and you're being taught um, Chen Zheng Li, and then you travel and move away somewhere else and find another teacher, and they teach Chen Xiao Wang style, then you're going to have to forget what you've learned and start a new system again. So it can be quite difficult, yeah, um, in, in, in this situation. For a, for, for a student, it can be a little bit frustrating, but uh, but we have to live with this situation. Okay, so let's do some uh, little bit of um, Lao Jia. So I'm going to try and teach you, show you, show, well, I can't really teach you because I can't see you, but I'm just going to try and show you um, the first two movements, okay, nice and relaxed. So feet together, uh, hands just hanging nice and loose, not touching, not close against your legs. So a little bit slightly away, just, just, it's just so that it allows the arm and the shoulder just to hang nice and loose. So if you have them close, then you kind of lock that position. So just allow the arms to hang nice and loose and relaxed. And we sink and we step to the left. Good. Good. Let's come back in again. So when we're beginners, we normally ask people to lift their left, left leg a little bit higher and place it more advanced, a little bit lower step. Okay. The important thing to remember, soften the right knee, peel off the left heel. Yeah. So the toes leave the ground first, but then as you step, the toes touch the ground first, lower the heel down, and weight moves across 50-50. 
first movement. It contains uh, six sub movements within the first movement, commencing form and starting the form. So, same movement as in Yang Star Tai Chi and many other forms. Raise the arms. So, raise the arms up, breathing in, shoulder height, turn the palms slightly, lower the arms down, soften the knees. Arms finishing, palms facing the ground, fingers pointing forward, and just a little bit above uh, in front of your legs, nice and relaxed. Okay. Third movement, you're going to do a little, tiny little circle to the right, and then you're going to move your hands up to the left as you shift your weight just a little bit onto the right leg. Okay, so you've got shoulder height, left hand slightly facing forward, right hand just slightly palm facing up. And then next movement, number four, we're going to rotate our hands and then we turn 45 degrees to the right, roll back on the right heel. Okay. Keep the arms and the hands exactly where they are, lower the right foot down, shift the weight to the right leg, pick up the left leg and step forward and keep weight back on your right leg. Movement number five, circle behind and then coming round facing the front. Left hand in front, palm facing down, fingers pointing to the right. Right hand, palm facing a little bit forward and about level with your right knee. Okay, now we're gonna step through into empty leg stance. So we just do a little flick forward with our left hand and a little flick back at the same time with our right hand. And we step through, we then bring our left hand in and right hand comes up, touches the left fingers, lifts up, becomes a fist, left hand turns palm facing up, fist comes down once, up, as you lift up the right leg, down, and stop. Close. Yes, let's just do that one more time. So nice and relaxed, and sink and step to the left. One, raise the arms. Two, soften the knees, arms coming down. Three, a tiny circle, hands move up to the left, shift the weight to the right. Four, rotate the hands, shift the weight to the left, roll back on the right heel, face 45 degrees to the right. Five, shift the weight to the right leg, pick up the left leg, and six, step. Keep weight on the back on the right leg. And hand circling to the front, stepping through, empty leg stance, making the fist gently down into the left hand, picking up the right leg, and and then close. Good. So let's do that one more time. This time I'll do with the, the numbers. So I'll do one to six will be the first movement, and then another one to six will be the second movement. First of all, we sink and step, and this is actually part of the form in large arm. So body is nice and relaxed, shoulders relaxed, head feeling like it's been suspended, chin just tucked in, just very naturally, nice and relaxed. One, raise the arms, soften the knees just very slightly. Two, pressing down, soften the knees more. Three, circle and lifting the hands up. Four, rotate the hands and turning 45 degrees to the right. Five, shift the weight, pick up your left leg. Six, step. End of the first movement.
second movement, the Buddhist warrior pounds the mortar. One, circling, coming to face forward, wait a little bit onto your left leg. Two, stepping through. Three, right hand coming up into a fist. Four, gently coming down. Five, lift up the right leg. Six, drop. Loads. So when the fist comes down in the body of pounds more to you, the thing that some people get, they think they need to do a, yeah, it's not this, yeah. It's the stamp, yeah. This can uh, sometimes hardly touch, okay. It's just in your mind, this bit here, yeah. You just come down gently, but with the foot, yeah, stamping on the ground. If you have bad knees, then obviously you just um, adjust things to your own requirements and have you, yeah. So just very quickly, let's just go through that just one more time. And sink and step. One, raise the arms. Two, pressing down, soften the knees. Three, tiny circle to the right, and then move the hands up to the left. Shift the weight to your right leg a little bit. Four, rotate the hands, turning, roll back on the right heel. Five, shift the weight to the right leg, pick up the left leg. Six, step, keep weight back on the right. One, circling, facing forward. Two, little flick and then stepping through, empty leg stance. Three, fist. Four, coming down gently. Five, lifting up the right leg. Six, stop. Close, hands coming in and down. And okay, stop. thanks, Steve. Uh, about a minute left. And breathing out. Feet together. And Tai Chi salute. Good. Thank you. Well done, everybody.